Welcome back. I am going to get started on our next game here. I'm going to play Battle Brothers. Uh, several people did mention that they had a lot of interest in this game. I went in completely blind. Uh, it's definitely a very interesting game. I did start a campaign and played about 20 days. And by that time I kind of learned the basics of the game and realized I was doing a lot of things very suboptimally. Um, originally I was trying to do like a no death run, but that's effectively impossible on a game like this now that I understand how it's set up. Uh, you're gonna hire a band of mercenaries, people are definitely gonna die, in fact you're gonna almost hire people with the expectation that they are gonna die in order to protect the people that you want to survive and level up that are gonna have better stats. So it's a very interesting dynamic in that aspect. It's a turn-based combat system. Um, I'm going to play on the hardest difficulties here. I'm not using any mods because I don't know enough about the base game to really go off of that. I do have uh, the DLC installed, so there's going to be something called a Lindworm, which I don't know what that is. There's Beasts and Exploration, which I think gives some additional items, units, things like that. Uh, Warriors of the North, Blazing Deserts, and A Flesh of Faith. So it was on sale, so the whole thing was about, I think I spent maybe $40. Um, so if this is a game that, you know, after I'm playing it, you guys have interest in it and you want to purchase it yourself, it's certainly not a super expensive game, especially because you have all the DLC content. It seems like there's going to be a large repayability of this game because you have all sorts of different starts and things from what I was reading about it. But we're just going to do the base game on the hardest settings here. So we'll get the new campaign started, and I'm certainly not an expert by any means. As you guys know, I like to go into games blind and kind of figure things out as uh, I play, and certainly if you guys have a lot of experience in this game, let me know, because uh, I'm sure there's definitely going to be things that could be done better. But let's uh, do the new campaign. We're going to just do the tutorial here, the rebuilding a company. It'll show us how we end up playing the game and kind of the basic start in case other people are unfamiliar uh, of how this game works too. I'm not sure if there's actually an end to this game. I mean it seems like there's kind of a default weak story and then you're just out in the world trying to make a mercenary band work. So I don't know where the end of the campaign really is so we'll have to sort that out as we're playing. I, there, when I continue on there's going to be these things called end game events and I don't quite understand how that works because I didn't obviously get that far uh, but there's definitely major aspects of the game that you want to be doing so uh, rebuilding a company you are the second in command in a mercenary company that has been tracking a brigand named Hogart for some time now an unexpected turn of events leads to the company and shatter it leaves the company in shatters and you and you in charge to rebuild it to its former glory. Recommended for new players, including some helpful guidance in the beginning. And I definitely feel like I am a newer player. Um, certainly I wouldn't go through and do all these other um, starting or origins. But if there is a lot of replayability and people seem to like this game, I could probably be talked into doing another uh, playthrough of it. But uh, like I said, I haven't even made it through once, so... For all I know, this is good. I'm not going to make it through the first game because this is. Been, I've been told this is a notoriously difficult game, and from what I saw on my first attempt, it definitely is a hard game. Like I, I think I'm a pretty reasonable, uh, incompetent gamer. I'm definitely not an expert, and there's definitely people that are better than me. But I struggled on my first campaign on here, and I made some really bad decisions not understanding the game mechanics. So hopefully, this will make it less painful. Uh, by just starting another campaign over with having some basic knowledge. And again, I don't know what the late game crises are, so we'll just do it random. And I'm not going to do the permanent destruction because it looks like the default is not to have that activated. So that is what we will do. And as we are a mercenary troop, I thought there was... Which one did I have? There we go. I had the bloody banner here because I just thought that was appropriate for a mercenary band. Now, I have mixed feelings about this. I think combat should be on expert for the hardest difficulty. So that your opponents will be challenging and more numerous. The starting funds... <sighs> Let's see, expert contracts pay less and deserters will take their equipment with them. So 
So here's my thought. As I was talking with one of my friends who played this game, I generally, with playing these games, I just put everything on the hardest difficulty and just go forward. But what I've been told is that if you just do the expert contract economic difficulty, it just makes it so you just have to grind more. And I don't think anybody, including myself, really wants to do that. So maybe... I just don't know if it's going to be too easy on the beginner. And I, I, I feel like it's got to be an all or nothing situation here. Well, let's do it on the hardest difficulty for everything here. And then if we end up playing another campaign, we can say, well, we did everything on the hardest difficulties here. And if we do find that this is a little too grindy, then we could definitely feel less guilty about changing the economic difficulties to being easier and higher starting funds if we end up playing another campaign. Again, I don't even know how long this game is. So let's do that so I don't feel guilty about uh, this. But hopefully this doesn't turn into a grind fest. But the opposite side of that is the combat seems to be the big draw of this game and people are gonna die so it may make it for a more stark experience I mean the life of a mercenary is not easy so we will do this so we'll get less payment for contracts and deserters will take their equipment with them low starting funds and expert and we are not playing Iron Man because I don't know enough about this game and from my first experience I think that would be a disaster as the units have different abilities and you want to have kind of different strategies depending on how you play and if I fight somebody I haven't seen before I don't want to just have a full party wipe and just be done so we are not going to do that uh, I don't know what this map seed thing is all about so oh, actually it's going to tell me unique map seed determines what it'll look like. You can see the seed ongoing campaigns. Oh, I see. So if you want to play the same map that I'm doing, you would type in this code and it'll tell you um, what it is. And then I'm going to leave this unchecked. You still don't get to see everything, but it's like we're people that are living in this world, so we should know where the cities and stuff are. So I'm not going to go completely unexplored map. I don't think that makes a lot of sense. So let's get started. And I will read the text and everything in these games. Uh, if we're finding that they're kind of the same stems and things, I won't. Uh, but I do think it's kind of helpful, especially kind of having an understanding of what's going on, just to read the things here. So obviously if we play future campaigns, I won't read most of the text on here because I think it's going to get uh, redundant. But I'll make the assumption on future campaigns, if we even do that, that uh, you have kind of have a basic knowledge here. But since we're all going in blind, assuming, we'll read everything out. So, the last battle. It all went wrong. Two days ago, the company was hired to track down Hogart, the weasel, and his band of raiders. But it was them who found you first in ambush. Some joke about horses cut short by an arrow to the throat. Arrows shooting in from everywhere and nowhere. Men holler and scream, a great volume before death. As the hail subsides, you draw your weapons with the rest of your men, only to collapse to your knees. An arrow has punctured your side. You shout in pain. A hairy glances, sees the men charge without you to make a valiant last stand. Met in force as steel clashes with steel. You meet eyes with the captain. A last nod before his throat is cut. You are left in command now of what few men remain. Trembling in pain, you lean on your sword and with all the will you can muster, slowly rise again to the end. Now I do have uh, that speed hack going because the other thing I found out is as you continue to play more throughout the game, you can get, you know, 30 plus units here and it takes a long ass time to do the turns so I think just using the cheat engine here to help with the speed is going to be a little beneficial for us here so we've got this crossbowman here Helmar the older and what you want to do is you can see what equipment these guys all have the closer you are with your uh, ranged weapons the higher the accuracy and shields can block both melee and range damage and so he's got an archer um, I don't know a thug I guess 
they're all thugs, I guess. But so you got archer with chainmail, some weak armor and stuff here. So we got a 59% chance to hit, and you missed. He's well, that must be Hogart. Yeah, it is. So he's running away. We're gonna hit spacebar to skip because we want them to come to us. But I don't know if he's going to. Maybe what we'll do is move you back this way. And we'll move you up, and then we'll do spear wall here. And what that does is if anybody moves into my zone of control, he'll get a free attack. Unfortunately, that did not happen, but it let this guy come into close quarters with us. So we're going to do that. And then we'll move you up. And we decapitated him, so he's down. And we'll move you up. And we'll do spear wall again, see if he comes into our territory. He does not. So he blocked. And you cut his head off. So I don't think we even suffered any wounds there, so that worked out pretty well. We've got Grimwald the Hound, Hilmar the Older, and Jurulf. So we got loot, we've got a couple of daggers and a buckler. You're alive and one. The adrenaline fades, and in its wake you can't help but sink back to the ground. Gritting your teeth, you snap the arrow shaft. Your chest heaves, pain for, br pain for breath. Everything blurs. The company has been devastated. Cut down to but a few men. And that bastard Hogart did justice to his name, fleeing like the weasel he is. What now, Captain? A voice says from behind, it is Grimwald the Hound, who sits down beside you, bedding his bloodied ass axe on his legs. You turn to him and reply, but before you can answer, he continues, Bernhardt's dead. They slit his throat. He was a good man and a damn good leader, but all it took was one mistake, and that makes you the one in charge now, don't it? Hilmar the Older joins the two of you, still breathing heavily, then Gerald. Save the ceremony and anointments for another day. Let's give the men a good burial and return to Bokenberg to collect our pay. The weasel's men are all slain, after all, besides the captain. Besides, captain, we ought to see to that wound before we lose you two. Wouldn't want to leave Hilmar the older in charge, right? So be it. Alright, so what do we got for a map here? I don't know what's a good map and what's a bad map, but as you can see, we've kind of got three places together here and something over here. Looks like that's a pretty major city, which unfortunately... Oh, these are different locations here. So I don't know if they're even going to let me do business here, because the bigger the places are, sometimes they don't let you... Um, necessarily work with them until your renown is higher, which is one of the things I had to learn in my last playthrough. So let's get you up here. What a sorry display it must be for the onlookers as you arrive in Bokenberg for bloodied and beaten mercenaries down to their l down on their luck. The man who hired the company days ago. Gisbert, the councilman, no doubt expected you to return with a more glorious fashion. Still, he welcomes you to his house and offers bread and wine while the servants fetches a healer. Few words are exchanged except the occasional grunt and wheeze as an elderly man with a shaky hand tends to your wounds. A pin pierces your skin, the first of many stitches that come. You grit your teeth till you think you hear one break. Gisbert, the councilman, sits beside you and asks if you took care of Hogart. You shake your head. We killed his men, but the weasel eluded our blades in the end. The healer waves around a glowing fire poke, suggesting he wants to push it into your wound. You nod as he does so for a moment. That's all there is. You're not a man, but a pinch of fire, flesh from flame, a golem of pain. Gisbert, the council man, hands you a goblet of wine. You did well, Selsword. The brigands have been removed, though it's a shame that Hogart still lives. We expect to get paid for this. The councilman gasps. 
Well, naturally, 400 crowns as agreed upon. He gestures towards the servant who rushes to your side with the pay in hand. I wonder, may I make use of your services one more time? I'd very much like to put an end to the headache that is Hogar once and for all. I would pay you again, of course, another 400 crowns, shall we say. The hound scoffs and turns to drink more wine, but Jerolf stands to speak. Yes, Captain. Yes, the company is in ruin, but we will rebuild it. Without the Battle Brothers, Grimwald the Hound would drink the crowns away and end up begging on the streets, and Hilmer the Older, by the gods, we all know he'd go chasing womenfolk until one stove his rotted head in. We need the Battle Brothers, that's all we have. What say you, Captain? Grimwald the Hound burps and raises his cup to you. Hilmar the Older, playing, playfully thumbs his nose and nods. Kill the bastard, Hogard or not, it's up to you, Captain. Yes, we have unfinished unfin business. The councilman claps his hands in satisfaction. Excellent. My little birds will need some time to find out where Hogart is hiding his hide now. In the meantime, I suggest you see about stocking up on supplies so that you'll be good and ready to end this when the time comes. I shall see you in a few days' time, at least. As you leave the councilman's house, you stand on the outskirts of Bokenberg. One of your men wants to seek a word with you. We need more men captain i know i gave a big speech back there but bravado won't do shit we need more warm bodies in the ranks figure we'll find three good men buy them some decent weapons and dress them up in the best armor we can afford the man pauses to glance around i bet this bodunk town got a desperate peasant or two looking for a new life or maybe we could travel to the oh my god what are these names shower feast Shore fest oh my god in the northeast them city folk always aren't always as hardy as the country bumpkins but we're more likely to find men with fighting experience stopping to rest there that's what we shall do all right so we got taxidermist marketplace armor so actually not a bad town you guys are actually pretty expensive a brawler Farmhand, Butcher, Shepherd. Uh, let's just make them main. Uh, I hate to change their names, but I just need to help me keep track of who are my main characters that I want to keep and who do I not care about getting killed. Because what happens is these guys have good abilities and you don't want to end up losing them so brooding at time and at times suicidal it's no surprise that Grimwald is frequently found diving into battle with nothing more than a large two-hander seemingly unstoppable at times you are glad to have a man on your side he'll use any weapon you give him but Grimwald has a proclivity towards those who can make calamitous ruin out of a man's body. So that's his background, and he's a Spartan. And then Jerolf is not known to be a big talker, but he has every right to be. He once spared you from an orc's wicked chain with quick whirls and whips of his shield. The man's deflected all manner of mortal danger. Although rather quiet, you found you found Gerald's place in a shield wall to be rather indispensable. And then Hilmar, one of your more talented marksmen you've encountered in your travels, a clever bowman. He once loosed two arrows simultaneously to kill a charging set of brigands. While he has a fondness for killing from afar, Hilmar is no slouch in the close close quarters combat either all right so we don't really have much for equipment so going back to here all right well let's take a look here looks like we got some decent prices on food I think we'll go with the goat cheese That'll be 11 days worth. We've got some resources here. We'll buy a thick tunic. 
I guess we can buy a quiver. Buy some hoods. Buy some shields. And I think the rest of this is pretty average. Part of me wants to maybe buy like a spear and things like that, but I'm going to hold off at this point in time. What do you... Oop, that's not... And then, let's look at hiring. God, these guys are way more expensive than uh, the ones I had access to on my other file. So I guess the guys, starting guys must be random. So, maybe... Do I go to the other town, maybe? To hire some people? Well, this guy only costs seven. Which isn't bad. Looks like he's got armor and a knife to start with. Hmm. I'm going to have to think about that one. Let's see what they got up here. Because we have to go up here anyways for the objective. Let's see. As it the city appears on the skyline on the horizon, Hilmar seeks a word with you. Never been to the city before. I've been around ones that look a lot like it. Cities like these are great for selling goods, as all the prissy, pompous pricks love to have their goods delivered with so many merchants. You can find almost everything you need, too. Keep an eye out for bargains and don't get swindled by the cutthroat merchants. Grimwald's main... Oh, Grimwald see, uh, sees fit to add his own opinion of what you should do. If there's a good tavern, I say that's what we should where we should go first. Nothing helps a man down on his luck more than a good pint. God knows we earned it. Hilmar shakes his head. You say that every time we step into a town. You say that even when you're already drunk. I'll keep that in mind. Alright, let's look at the city here. We gotta hire three guys. That's freaking expensive. Come on, guys. Alright, here we go. There's nine. What is he? Apprentice? Here's another apprentice. Alright, these are more like the costs I was expecting to see. Mason, 150. Okay. Alright, that should help us. Now, what do we got for equipment here? What did we even get? So, Guido is, you know, a tank melee, I guess. And we'll just call him okay. You are... Oh, does he have abilities? He has minus one vision, so he's got a negative trait, but he gets extra experience, and then his background. Mastery of the art is prestigious, but no one gets there in an instant. Guido thought the same, taking the role of an apprentice. Learning all he could, he built the greatest work of art possibly ever seen in the field of underwater basket weaving. His master, though, was, je was a jealous one. Not to be outdone by his people, he burned the project to ash and eyes watering f to ash and eye watering fumes. It was clear to Guido that he could learn fast, but perhaps there was better masters to study beneath. Interesting, and yet he ended up to come see me. Actually, he's got some decent starting equipment here, so that's pretty good. How about you? Five range defense, determined. He's an apprentice as well. Everybody looks up to the best, but no one gets there in an instant. Uh, when he was, when the college asked for apprentices, Arnulf was the first to sign up. He soaked up all there was to learn: masonry, carpentry, blacksmithing, love making. Now he turns his eyes to the martial arts. While he isn't exactly a warrior yet, Ulnerp is a fast learner. So he's got some stuff into range skill, initiative, resolve. So let's say average archer. 
But I think we can make do with this. He's also got a nice little tunic there. Let's get you that stuff. Because he's going to be a frontliner for a while. He actually has more health than the guy that's got the bonus health there. And what about our last guy here? I guess you're going to use that. You don't have a weapon. So that's an oversight on my part. He also needs some headgear. Let's see. Good spirits. Mason. With a brick layer for a father. His entrance into masonry was but the smallest of steps. Fortunately, his time as a mason was short-lived. The church he built collapsed and out of its ruins arose a murderous mob looking for revenge. One day... A poster of the mercenary troop caught his eye. Much like his old building, the rest is history. Oh, man. So, I guess, um, melee. Weak melee. So, if he ends up getting himself killed, that's not the end of the world. So, I guess I'd rather have him on the end, then. I guess we're going to get you the buckler, probably. Well, maybe we can find some better items here. Yeah, see, everything's pretty expensive here. I would like to get him a wooden shield, though. And maybe what I'll do is I'll go back down to that other town. Yeah, I can't afford that. Yeah, we'll go down to the other town. Get you that. And then we'll try to buy him a weapon. And then everybody should be kitted out, I think. Yeah, everything here is very expensive. Alright, time to leave. Contracts are locked. Okay, yeah, so I can't even get contracts here. What did it all have? So it's got a tavern, armor... Weaponsmith, Training Hall. Alright, so let's return down to here. The councilman is packing is pacing back and forth when you find him. The healer who damn near killed you with the fire poker is standing nearby. He's picking chunks of dry blood out of his fingernails. The councilman claps his hands. Finally, you're here. I have good news. We've got hold of one of Hogart's former men. My good friend here has a nice little talk with the man, and now I know where Hogart's licking his wounds. The healer clears his throat, splay, spl spl splaying his fingers out like a maiden looking to paint them. He speaks as though he's identifying disease. Uh, he is identifying a disease he's about to excise. The brigand known as Hogart is hiding in a small hut in the desert southeast of here. Based on my most civil discussion with one of his men, Hogart knows the Battle Brothers are on his heels and have gathered more men since the last time you met him. Nodding, the councilman wanders off. Good luck, Sellsword. We'll return with his head. Alright, and I'm going to need to buy something. Hatchets. Knife. Let's buy a knife. And I needed some headgear, didn't I? There we go. And I guess he needs headgear too. Uh, I hate to spend all that money on it. 
All right, he's a he's a backliner, so hopefully he just won't get hit. Famous last words. Let's run down here. Now, I guess the next question is: is if we're fighting at night, maybe we just turn him into a melee guy. And we just go in for the kill. I don't know if he's going to have archers or not. Your scouts report they have seen the following. Some brigand, thug, brigand thugs and a poacher. Engage. Alright, let's see what we can do here. He's got some nice armor. That would be a big upgrade for us. So we'll, maybe they can just keep charging us. This guy just has some padded armor and then some gambeson so I don't think that's our significant upgrades for what we have try to put the spear up there to block some range of some movement of their guys here trying to get everybody positioned since it looks like they're gonna to want to engage me around the bottom part here I'm just Thinking if I come here, then I can at least help hold the line. I've got all these daggers because if I can kill them with the puncture, then I can get their armor. So the top one is like their helmet armor, the second blue bar is their armor health, and then red is obviously their HP. And when you're killing guys, like if you see the guy in the middle there with the sword and the shield, you know, I took out his uh, helm, so it's broken, so I can't get that now. But his chainmail still has full armor. So I think that's going to be a big upgrade. Actually, I think pretty much all these guys' armor would be a big upgrade for me. So since we have the uh, knives attached, I'm just going to try to keep puncturing guys down and doing damage to what we can. That's what that special ability is. One is just a general attack, and then two is the puncture. But unfortunately, when you're using their special abilities, that puncture does uh, create increased fatigue, which can then make you lose turns. I'm going to shield wall here because I need them just to hold the line against the uh, boss here while we're putzing around trying to kill these other guys. And this little flag on this guy is saying that he's starting to want to waver, which is not good. But we're chopping down all these other guys, and now their morale is starting to waver too. But he just has some regs on, so it doesn't really matter if that gets killed. The other guy just has some regs too. I think we just keep our shield wall up to keep holding the line here. We'll quickly try to just kill these other guys. And maybe if I can get the kills, that'll break morale, and they'll try to retreat, and they'll stop attacking me. Alright, so he's down too. He's shield walling. I'm just trying to bait. Should I bring him down here? Because I think I'd like to just kill this other guy. And then just get a max round on, and I might be able to do enough morale checks to break them down. Start positioning him to get this round, because I assume he's going to be breaking now that I've killed so many of his guys. Keep the shield wall up so you can see my fatigue is now maxed out, so he's not going to be able to attack. I'm going to bring this guy up so he can maybe split the shield. Bring you around the back. Now unfortunately he doesn't really, with this spear he'll do damage to armor, so I gotta be a little careful. <clears throat> I've gotta just waste his turn, because I don't have <clears throat> the fatigue to attack. He doesn't have the fatigue to split shield. <clears throat> I 
Yeah, I see his shield's blocking all of my attacks. We'll just let everybody heal up their fatigue. Alright, finally got an attack through. Another one went through. Unfortunately, I just don't have the fatigue recovery to get there. Now I can split his shield. That's what that third ability is. And now it's broken, so now he won't be able to be blocking. So hopefully now I can just land all my attacks. He's trying to run away. So now they'll try to escape, and he won't attack me anymore. So now there's n he won't be able to kill any of my guys, because that's what I was worried about. Was him landing some attacks. So we'll just quick puncture him down. And that should get us some really nice armor. In fact, I think this battle went so well, we'll probably get a bunch of really good armor. And probably have some pretty major upgrades. Come on, guys. Alright, that was terrible, so I think we should have the armor, though. Yeah, see, look at that. We've got a nice armor, armor. Yeah, we've got nice upgrades for our guys here. And we even got some amber shards. And two of our guys leveled up. So that worked out pretty well. We did get some light wounds, but nothing terrible. Hogart lies dead in a pool of his own blood, skewered into a grotesque and panicked pose. He didn't weasel his way out of this one. He put, You put a boot on his corpse and look to your men. For the company, for all the men who have fallen, Hilmar Main spits on the dead man's face. Let's take this bastard's head back to Bokenberg. Time to get paid. Alright, and we definitely want our two-hander to have that on, since he will be taking shots. And same with there, because he's unarmored. And now we've got Gambeson, which is a pretty significant improvement on all of our fronts here. So let's get that. And we should probably give it to our mains here. So they can survive. Unfortunately, we didn't get any uh, better weapons here. That's 40. 30. Main, main. I guess let's give you one of these. Actually, 55 is pretty good. Some okay tank, average archer, weak melee. So I guess let's make you have that, since I do kind of care of you, care about you. And we'll keep trying to fight some humans here to get better equipment. Got some light wounds. But overall, I think that was a smashing success for us. We got up to 35. Yeah, see, I mean, that everything has been upgraded pretty dramatically here. So that's excellent. Let's take a look at our levels here. So we're going to get you melee, HP, and probably melee defense. So those seemed like excellent levels there. And then for perks for you, I think we want to get you student so you can level up faster. And for you, you are our archer, so let's get you that. Let's get you some HP and probably ranged defense, I would imagine. Do a little something like that. 
and we'll get you student as well. And then you can level up even faster because I think over the time frame of the game that's going to be pretty significant because it's 20% extra H, uh, experience. And then at the 11th level you gain an additional perk. So, and then this perk no longer does anything for you. So it just effectively helps you level up to a higher uh, rate or a higher level faster. So that seems great overall. So let's get over to here. Hillary the main joins your side. Got a moment, Captain? You nod and s uh, to him. You nod for him to speak his mind. The battle left some gear worse for wear, and some men got a good nickin' too. We can patch up both man and equipment while marching, but there, but it's a lot faster to set down and do it. Of course, if we make camp, we should be wary of ambush as a campfire, and these parts can be seen from every which way. I'll keep that in mind. Actually, the other thing I should probably consider doing is repair that so it is ready and I would like to get another big shield there but then I don't really plan on having you typically in the front line here Uh, so let's come over here. The company returns to Bokenberg as the victors. Their heads held much higher this time. The Battle Brothers are not the size they once were, but they're still a force to be reckoned with as Hogart learned in his final moments. You can carry you carry his head in a sack and you empty it in front of the councilman's feet. He jumps back, but the healer quickly picks up the head and stares at it and nods. The councilman approaches the bigger's bloody face and eyes it carefully. Yes, yes. This, that's his ugly mug. All right, servants, pay this man his money. Coin at hand, you raise your voice to the men. As long as there's blood coursing through our veins, as long as we can hold a sword and shield, there shall, there shall stand our company. And through the realm, people will know the Battle Brothers. The men cheer. Uh, Garof puts the puts a hand on your shoulder. You did well, Captain. No matter where you lead us, the men will follow you as brothers in battle as brothers nice and there's even a contract available unfortunately everything is shut down at night um, so we'll look into this next time so thanks for watching i hope you're enjoying these videos if you are please give my channel a like and subscribe to encourage me to post more content for you have a great day